Hello! This presentation will be about the use of homogeneous coordinates, uh, and especially for matrix representations of affine transformations. So let's start off with homogeneous coordinates. Uh, this is taken from sections 2.2.4 and 2.2.5 in the PDF of the textbook online, uh, so you can also read about it there. But let's start off with homogeneous coordinates, and we're working in R2 at the moment, in 2 space. So the here we let x, y, and w be scalars. So these are real numbers. And let's assume that w is not equal to 0. OK? And then the triple of values x, y, w. And I write this with angle brackets, which of course usually means a 3 by 1 column vector, but I'm not going to write column vectors. I'm going to use the row, row notation with angle brackets to stand for column vector. This triple is homogeneous representation, or a homogeneous representation, of the following point, of the point x over w, y over w, in R2. So in other words, this three numbers, x, y, w, represents a point in two space. The first coordinate, the x coordinate of the point is x over w. The second component is y over w. So let's do some examples here. Uh, the point one, two, the, the triple, one, two, one, represents 1, 2 in R2 as homogeneous coordinates or homogeneous representation. Uh, so 1 divided by 1 is 1, 2 divided by 1 is 2, so 1, 2 is what it represents. If we multiply by 2, 2, 4, 2, this also represents 1, 2 in R2, exactly the same point, right? Because 2 over 2 is 1, and 4 over 2 is 2, so 1, 2. Of course, the pattern continues. 3, 6, 3 also represents exactly the same point. We can also use negative numbers, like negative 1, negative 2, negative 1 represents the same point, or negative 5, negative 10, negative 5 represents the same point. So anytime we multiply all three values by a non-zero number, it changes everything proportionally, and the ratios x over w, y over w stay the same. So the word homogeneous really means uh, sort of thing is smooth, smoothed out. It really refers to the fact that if you multiply by a constant a triple x, y, w, it still represents the same point in R2. So this seems like a sort of strange thing to do at first glance. Why would we use three numbers to represent a point in R2 instead of two? But we'll see there's going to be a lot of useful things for this, and it's deeply embedded into large parts of graphics as well. So a particularly useful uh, thing with homogeneous coordinates to get us started, at least, is to use matrix representations for affine transformations. So we're going to deal with an affine transformation in R2, and we want to give a represent matrix representation. And it's going to be not the matrix operating on the usual xy coordinates. It's going to instead be a matrix that operates on the xyw coordinates, on homogeneous coordinates. So this is a matrix representation that works over homogeneous coordinates. So let's just write this out. We'll see what happens here. Let's let a of x be an affine transformation. So in particular, a of x is equal to b of x plus u, where b is linear. It's a linear transformation. Uh, and say represented by a 2 by 2 matrix. So it'll be represented by some matrix, which I'll just call 
A, B, C, D, which is a two by two matrix representing the linear map, as we discussed earlier, over R2. And then U is a point in R2. And so it's a column vector, which I'll just have components E and F. E is the X component, and F is the Y component of the point U. And that's the translation part of the affine transformation. So now we're going to pick a 3 by 3 matrix. Let N be the 3 by 3 matrix. So we're using a 3 by 3 matrix to represent an affine transformation in R2. And the entries in the matrix are A, B, 0, C, D, 0, U, E, F, Z, 1. So let's see how N represents the transformation A in R2. So using homogeneous coordinates. So let X, Y, 1 be a representation of X, Y in R2. So X, Y, 1 are homogeneous representation of the point X, Y. And so if we take the transformation A, A applied to the column vector X, Y, it's equal to A, B, C, D times X, Y plus E, F. In other words, A was B, X plus U. B is represented by the 2 by 2 matrix A, B, C, D. U is the column vector E, F. When we multiply that out, we get A, X plus C, Y plus E as the first component, the x component of the image, and bx plus dy plus f as the y component. So we just took xy inner product with ac plus e plus the e, and then xy intersect inner product with bd plus the f, and that gives us the image of xy under the transformation a. On the other hand, if we take n, and we take n times xy1, well, what's that equal to? That's equal to a, b, 0, c, d, 0, e, f, 1, times x, y, 1. And now we take the inner product of the column vector x, y, 1 with a, c, e, and we get a, x, plus c, y, plus e. And we take the column vector inner product of the second row, we get b, x, plus dy plus f, and the inner product of the column vector with the third row is 0x, 0y, plus 1 times 1, which is 1. And this is a homogeneous representation of the same point. And so this is a homogeneous representation, or a set of homogeneous coordinates, of the same point. Uh, as AX. So in this way, uh, the matrix N, when operating on homogeneous coordinates X, Y, 1, gives you the same value, a, rep a, a representation for the correct point that the A maps X, Y to. So, so far I've only mentioned the special case where the W component is, is 1, uh, but what about the general case? Let's just continue this board here. Um, what happens about, let's consider um, W, X, W, Y, W, where W is not equal to 0. This is another homogeneous representation. In fact, it gives all homogeneous representations of the point x, y. And we're interested in what is the transformation A due to the point x, y, and how does N act on those transformations? Well, if we write this out, we have N times 
wx, wy, w is equal to w times n times x, y, 1, just factoring out the w, so it's equal to w times this, so it's equal to w times ax plus cy plus e, w times bx plus dy plus f, w, and this is another homogeneous representation of the point A applied to x, y. Because again, if we divide through by the w component, we just get uh, x, ax plus cy plus e, and by plus dy, b. There was a typo earlier. This should have been a bx. Let me fix that typo. So this bx plus dy plus f. And it's not hard to check. Also, if we take for any uh, alpha not equal to zero, uh, alpha times n alpha times n is a 3 by 3 matrix that also represents represents A of x over homogeneous coordinates. And the reason for this is just alpha times n is just always applied to some column vector, always just gives alpha times the result of n times the column vector, so multiplying by an alpha on a triple doesn't change the point that it represents in R3. Uh, the last final comment here, for the moment, use a different color here, we're always using 0, 0, 1 as the bottom row of these 3 by 3 matrices, so there's no, there's not much, unless we multiply by an alpha, in which case we use 0, 0, alpha, so there's not much useful information in the bottom row. Later on, when we get to perspective transformations, we'll use the bottom row of this matrix as well to, to do useful things with perspective and depth. But for the moment, we'll mostly be using matrices in R2, where the bottom row is 0, 0, 1. When we get to R3, for affine transformations, it'll be 0, 0, 0, 1. But that's a topic for another lecture. Um, I would like to end up with a quick example, and then we'll be done on this presentation. So let's do an example of a matrix representation of an affine transformation. And we'll do this in terms of the F shape, as we had before. So let's just consider the following mapping. So we'll take the F in standard configuration. So this is 0, 0 here, 1, 0 here, 0, 1 here, draw that a little better, 1, 1, and 0, minus 1, and it gets mapped by the transformation A to the following F. Let me draw the axes. Here's the x-axis. Here's the y-axis. And I'm going to stretch this x f a little bit and slant it. So I'm here's, here'll be the point. F is going to look like this. Here's the sidebar and the two arms of the F are here after the transformation. So this will be the point 1, 0. So the origin has gotten mapped to 1, 0. This will be the point 2, 0. This will be the point 2, minus 2. Here will be the point 0, 2. 
and here will be the point 2, 1. So the F here in standard position has been mapped to this uh, slanted and, and translated F. So the matrix representation for A and this is a 3 by 3 matrix representation. How do we form it? So remember the bottom row is going to be 0, 0, 1. And then we look at the images well let's start off, let's look at the translation part first. The translation part, 0, 0 mapped to 1, 0. So the third column has 1, 0 and then a 1. And then we look at the images of the i vectors. So here's the i vector and the j vector also in the in the domain and these things get mapped to here and here and what are those two vectors so this is the vector the i vector is has been translated but its length is still the same right so it's still one zero because it's going from one zero to two zero the j vector has gotten uh, leaned back and stretched and so this is going to be minus one in the x direction plus 2 in the y direction. So this is minus 1, 2. And this is the, or A, I should say, 3 by 3 matrix representation of A. All right, that's the end of this presentation. Thank you very much.